Hello, and welcome back to another episode of uh, Fantasy Grounds RPG Map and Image Creation. I'm Josh, and uh, we are now on episode 8. Uh, I'm going to be going through, uh, last episode we did some nice new ways to create forests, and uh, giving the illusion of um, foliage uh, underneath and throughout the image. Giving us some color variants and, uh, and uh, really uh, changing up the map quite a, quite a lot. What I'm going to be showing you today is how to create mountains like this and other types of um, elevation changes in your uh, terrain. And uh, I'm going to sh be showing you a pretty simple technique uh, that I have uh, created for you guys that uh, uses uh, some very simple uh, brush mechanics and built-in Photoshop features that uh, I think that you guys can really take advantage of. And as always, just use a mouse and there's no sort of special abilities that you might need to have. And uh, this requires very little uh, to no artistic ability. Uh, so let's get to it. So what we're going to do is let's jump over here. I'm going to show you really quickly the way that I created those mountains. And um, it's I'm going to actually show you how simple it really is here. And let's just turn this off for a minute. So I'm just going to be using this as like a, um, a kind of springboard and to, to demonstrate here. So with this uh, layer off, I can actually just delete this. We're going to start completely over here. I just have this gray background and I'm just going to uh, actually grab this color um, for the demonstration. I'll probably turn it to black at some point, but uh, you'll see what I mean here. And so, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a new layer. And uh, in this layer, I'm going to double click on it and get to my uh, dynamics here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, built-in uh, bevel and emboss feature uh, with the, the contour uh, actually um, clicked on here as well. Now I'm just going to run through these parameters really quickly and show you how this, this works. Um, what I've done is I've created a, a system here by which we can uh, very easily take uh, almost any brush and turn it into something that's going to really help us uh, manipulate the terrain. Uh, so uh, I'll just give you a minute to uh, look over these settings. Uh, you want to duplicate these if you want to recreate this. And then the contour, I have it set uh, to 43. And you'll see that we can change this later to adjust how much um, we're affected. So I'm going to make sure I have my brush selected and I'm going to come over here. Uh, I'm going to start off with a, uh, actually get in here and I want to get to an area. I can do this with the uh, soft round at first. And what you can see here is as I move across with these, uh, the parameters, uh, I can create lots of different types of textures, right? And so if I have a soft brush, I can really do some really subtle kind of changes. But as you can see, as it gets harder, uh, towards the inside, uh, we can really begin to create uh, almost what looks like a 3D object here. So I'm just going to get rid of all of that. Uh, what we're going to do is we'll grab our original, the brush that we've been using over and over again here. And you can see is when I click on this, it creates all kinds of different shapes here. And we can we can jump in here and we can change this. So if we want to, uh, we can soften this up a little bit and uh, change how this interacts and blur it out a little. But we want these nice kind of crisp areas here. And if I, uh, one of the things that we really want to have happen, and I have lots of different texture brushes here, and you can see that as I use these, I can really do uh, a lot of interesting things. Now let me just uh, let's turn this off for a second and I'm going to make a new layer here and it's going to turn this to black. Now you can see that this brush has a lot of different variations in here, uh, both in um, opacity and uh, it, it's broken up quite a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, brush that we've been using right along here and we're going to do something similar with it. Right. So what I want to do is I'm going to switch over to my eraser, which I already have set up uh, for this brush, and I'm going to bring down my opacity and I'm going to randomly kind of come around this. And 
And I want to do uh, something kind of similar. I want a lot of hard edges. But I also want a lot of variations in here. And then, well, let's just, uh, I'm going to select, whoop, select this and delete it. And then I'm just going to hit uh, control C and then control N so that we're going to create an all new um, brush here. And then if I um, switch over to my brush and I go up to edit and I define this brush preset and we do um, tutorial brush two. Uh, you can see that it's already changed it. So when I come back here, and uh, let's just delete everything that's in this layer, uh, you can see that it it's creates all kinds of uh, information here. And if I drop down uh, my opacity to maybe 20%, and we can change some of our uh, dynamics here, our size, as we often do, our angle, and maybe even a little bit of scattering. And we want to put our spacing out some. Now, as you can see, what we can create here is a lot of different variants. If I grab uh, the actual color of my background here, I can start to build this up in such a way and I'm just moving around and clicking my mouse button once in a while here. And we can begin to create uh, what appears to be changes in height here. And I'm going to show you that we can go back and forth here with our uh, eraser and Now I can jump back to my eraser. Uh, if I so wish, I can now grab that uh, new brush that we created. And with my opacity nice and low as it was before, I can see I can start to really begin to manipulate this. We go to that new one where we have lots of other variations in there. And if I want to turn these things back on, I can. And so what I found works really well is if we create a base kind of layer. So if we do one layer that comes out and then uh, we can uh, duplicate this, we can make a new layer. And we want to put on the same dynamics as we have on the other layer. And we can further, I'm just going to switch over begin to really pull out some peaks here. And 
have a lot of control over how this uh, interacts. And then once we uh, have something that we kind of like here, uh, we can, if we wanted to create it outside of our actual image here, and let's get back to it. And let me just turn off these ones that I had created before. I can grab this down and I can just copy that layer. And if I want to uh, insert it underneath the um, forest that we did last time, I can just hit Control V. And what we've done is we've created very easily uh, some drastic changes in our ground uh, elevation. Let's make some that are right in the map uh, and we'll build right off of the ground and uh, we can use the shapes that we already have created here to our advantage this way. Um, I'm gonna take this one and we'll leave it over here, but let's just warp it a little bit and I'm gonna change it. Maybe it kind of comes down this way fit it into the spot. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm going to make a new layer here. I'm going to keep it gray. I'm going to go to our brush that we have done here. And I'm going to make sure I turn on those two um, very important layer styles. And I'm going to start to build this up. And you can see, just by clicking my mouse and dragging around, I can begin to uh, create. I do large, I can do these areas and don't feel like you can't go back and forth. You want to be able to really begin to manipulate. And this is where um, you can really have some fun creating all of the different elements here. By the way, I did a second layer of um, forestry, but I did it exactly the same way as we did the uh, first layer. And then I just changed the color slightly, did a little bit on top. Thought it might look like um, areas where trees would be uh, exceptionally tall. And I'm going to come over here and do some larger ones. I might do like one large mountain over here. And then I'm going to make one more layer of this. Make sure we turn on those, uh, that layer style. And I'm just going to do a little bit on top here. I want to make sure that this looks like a nice big peak. And I can pull down the ridges. I'm just holding down my mouse and moving out to the side here. Really trying to make it look like those um, lines of uh, erosion. Yeah, and you can see how easily and quickly you can make these. Uh, maybe we want some over in here.
And if your uh, eraser is a little bit too much, just turn down the opacity. It's one of the great things about uh, just clicking around here. And once we get to an area like this where we feel like um, it's it's pretty well uh, completed, uh, what I would do is just uh, bring these down so they're all in one layer. We, we still have that guy out there, so there we are. Uh, we can now adjust uh, if we feel like that they are too dark or too light. We can do some adjustments in here. I also like to do um, a multiply layer. And we'll switch over to our brush here. And even with the uh, the same brush, I'm going to come along and just put in some of these shadows. Just to bring this out a little bit more. Make it feel like it's really sticking up out. And I might even go in and do some highlights as well. Now I'm going to show you one last thing with this, which is uh, really, really cool. Uh, we're going to make one more layer. And we're going to put those uh, same parameters back on, except this time we just click on the down button. And now look what happens when we paint in with our brush here. we actually begin to carve away at the ground instead of adding on top of it. So this is great for um, creating ravines and canyons. And the same thing applies here. You can go back and forth with your And you can get right in here and do this very layered. And I might even do And this would be a really great feature to come in and do around our our rivers to really give that feeling that they have been cut away over time. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, we've gone over some a fairly simple way that you can uh, quickly and easily create uh, more um, kind of realistic looking um, features to your to your maps. Um, and of course, if you wanted to change these colors or the opacity of them, uh, you can do that very easily as well. But uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode.